Hello and welcome everybody to a new digital painting video with Krita. In this case we're gonna try to capture all the essence of a beautiful city that is located in the south of Spain. We are talking about Ronda. Ronda is near to Malaga where I live. It's, it's beautiful, it has plenty of ancient culture and you can enjoy beautiful landscapes. So if you like rocks, bridges, vegetation, ancient culture and this kind of things, this is your video. Are you ready? Let's go! Okay, so here we go. As you can see, I am starting using like ochre brownish as the main color. I use a colored background to emulate a bit the traditional media workflow. The gradient tool is used to create a simple sky. Now I'm creating some lines to be used as guides to have located the main shapes and big important areas in the drawing. I started with solid color to have unified feeling and not too much detail. Then I create a shadow over the bridge to get more bridge integration in the image. Adding elements like houses, we get the sense of a scale or I compare with the size of the windows or doors and establish the scale. I create darker areas to increase the contrast and as you know, when we have three values, we get the sense of volume. I change to the airbrush to get more blended edges and make some kind of early vignette with the bridge. The color change is produced with the same airbrush but using color touch blending mode. If you like how the video goes so far, then it is time for a mini tip. You can skip if you want and continue with the explanation. I give you the time code. Mini tip. Okay, when I make right click, I get this. Probably you have less brushes here because you have not modified the, the settings. So where is this in the settings? If I go here in the settings, configure Krita, go to the general miscellaneous and the number of palette presets is around 12, if I remember well, but you can put the number, the maximum number of 30. So I use this to have more space to allocate my favorite brushes. I know it, I have a lot of favorite brushes, but there is a reason why I use this setup. But how can I create a disc like this? Let's make it. If I go here, I can create my own tag. I can name this as Fabs Ronda, okay? And we click in a set. This is empty by default, but if I go here, I can use my favorite brushes go directly to my Fabs Ronda and this is also go to my Fabs Ronda. Make right click in the brush. I select this is also useful and right click and go to the Fabs Ronda. Let me choose a texture for example like this and Fabs Ronda. Okay. So if I make right click, I can change the brushes zone here. So if I go here and select the Fabs Ronda, I get my brushes. When you have a lot of different brushes in the brush preset dockers like this, look for the right brush can be a really hard task. So I use this kind of setup where I have located different categories of brushes. For example, imagine I'm using an airbrush like this and I need to texture this brush stroke. If I need a texture brush, usually I go here to the last part of the brushes, default resources. So I go here and select the brush and apply with the brush stroke. How can we do this faster? If I go here, I have the airbrush. Airbrush is really important. I can go directly to the texture like this. and I save time looking for the right brushes. But imagine this is not the texture that I want to use. Well, it doesn't really matter because this way I am located in the area of the texture brushes. So maybe I don't want this brush, so I can change 
And if I go to the airbrush, I just make right click and go to the airbrush. Okay, pretty easy, pretty fast. For example, imagine I want to use wet paint and mix a bit with this brush stroke. Imagine I don't want to use this wet and you want to use another one. As I am in the area of the wet brushes, I can do it really easy. I try to get the sense of texture as much as I can by personal preference. And I am thinking about changing the sky because finally I want all the attention focused on the bridge. I add some green to the right mountain to create separation between planes, but this will change in a couple of minutes or seconds. This is really a speed up. Believe me when I say that I don't paint so fast. I need to enjoy what I do. This painting takes me, uh, if I remember well, like three hours, finally. So yes, I have edited a lot to get only the interesting parts that give us something to learn from. I use a lot the flat brush when I want to separate planes in the image and hide a bit of texture if it is not needed by now. Wow, now I see mountains look a bit better. Krita has also interesting brushes to paint vegetation in a fast way. Be careful applying greens because uh, very often they are not so pure or saturated as you can imagine. I paint dark and then I paint a bit of light to achieve fast volume with the trees. I use also the wet brushes for example painting water because wet brushes help us to drag some paint and create a very realistic feeling really fast. At least I like it. And you? Do you like the wet brushes? Uh, let me know in the comments. Again, I use the airbrush to smooth the value contrast. Painting images like this is really fun, but you have to be really careful to not get lost into detail in a stage. I have main areas defined, so I can add some parts of texture in Jav. I love that part. As I need some texture to produce the rock filling, I use a bit of grain produced by the chalk brush. I use the chalk brush also in the big rocks to add the sense of big scale. Not real happy, but it's a good starting point. Now you can see how useful it is to rotate the canvas to create vegetation. So it is time for another mini tip explaining why I use this and how. Mini tip. Sometimes we use the vegetation brushes like this, and that's very cool and it's really fast. But what happens if we want to rotate the grass? Well, we can do this in a very different ways. We can go to the brush editor and just here rotate the brush tip in the angle that we need to achieve, right? But what happens when we don't want to modify the brush? We can use also the keys six and four and we are doing this so we are using a straight brush now we can just create something like this or we can use the shift space and we get the dynamic rotation so i can paint this and paint this and i continue painting this but as you can see, this is not really, really good. Why? Because it creates very angular shapes. It's not fluid, okay? It's not following the path of, of the brush. So how can we achieve this? If we go to the brush editor and restore the brush, we go to the rotation, activate the rotation and select the drawing angle and remove the pressure because by default one parameter here has to be active and we activate the drawing angle and let this as default okay don't touch anything you're noticing instantly that if i turn my brush grass is following the brush stroke so that's pretty nice because sometimes we need to create uh, for example 
this kind of shapes, slanted valley or whatever. But look at this. If I make the brush stroke in the different direction, I get the normal of the grass is in the opposite direction. So <laughs> it's not perfect, but now in this, I can create whatever I want. Also, if you have the tilt feature available in your stylus, you can use instead of the drawing angle, use the tilt direction. And now look at this. You need to relocate the rotation. Okay, so if I make a grass like this, but I need to rotate for slanted ballet and go to it in another direction it doesn't really matter the direction of the brush stroke. But now you understand how to tweak the rotation problems that you can afford in the landscape painting. I want to define a bit the rocks and mountains and the bridge. Detailing is stage now. I add details here and there, and at the same time, I'm thinking about the overall perception of the image. Sometimes a detail can change the mood or bring interest to a specific parts in the image. Now it's time to create flowers and white yellowish plants in the foreground. This step is important because it helps the viewer to be more integrated in the picture, more involved emotionally also. I use the blenders very often to drag color. It's a personal preference, but I think it gives you another look not so perfect instead of get a detailing brush or fan brush and be careful with your strokes. I duplicate the layer with foreground and merge later to increase the color and I also apply the color cures filter to increase the result. Don't overdo the plants. In my reference, there was much more plants but I remove them to don't disturb the viewer attention. I love flowers, so small and so important at the same time. Time for detail in some rocks that needs a bit of light to get more contrast. Now I put some details on the left mountain and also in rocks near the bridge, but not too much, not for the real style this time. Even I remove a real yellow upper part in the bridge because it doesn't fit very well. Hey, we are painting, isn't it? I increase the light in the waterfall because I like it and I am now thinking what I'm going to do with the sky and final touch. I don't want to detail too much in, in one area because that forced me to do in all the image. Put in some details again, as I did in the left side building. I realized that I forgot to do the house at the top of the painting. Oh, Raymond, let's define it a bit. I am detailing some rocks using the blender knife edge to move some parts that I have already painted. Finally, the bottom parts rocks are not going to be so detailed even when I love rocks. Now it's time for finishing, adding some details in the rock texture, simulating a bit of crash. Again, I use the chalk brush to get a more textured and grainy stroke. Very often, while I am painting, I add my signature when I'm happy with the result. And as the signature is in a separate layer, I can move and transform or do whatever I need. It is curious, but as you can see right now, the right side mountain is more Jeroist. I decided to remove the idea of making it green to create contrast with the bridge. I think this transferred the idea that the bridge is part of the mountain much better than I thought at the beginning. So what do you think about this? If we follow the theory, then we need a different tone to separate the bridge and get depth. But I think, at least for me, it's more interesting to integrate it like a unique shape with the mountain. In fact, the bridge was built with the rocks from the mountain. 
It has 100 meters of height. Imagine each pillar as another known monument like La Giralda. And it is really solid because the previous one crumbled and 50 persons died. This is why it is also called Puente Nuevo or New Bridge. It is called Tajo because it means deep cut. And that's the end of this painting. Now it's time for the closing words. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you like it and see you next time.